We're back with Leslie on day 77 of his 100 day adventure. We're nearing the end of the story and will Leslie make it? Let's find out. We join our hero on the road to Louisville. He stops in the road to check out a news van and pulls the expensive camera equipment out of the back. He wants to make a special kind of video but it doesn't work, so he rips the camera to pieces with his bare hands. Trust us. Im... Imac... Imac... Eh? Oh, I think it's like an extremely expensive camera. I can't put it down, unfortunately. But maybe uh, Leslie could make some of his some home videos with his with his pet friends. What do you think? I don't think we should encourage that kind of behaviour, so we're gonna just rip that apart. He takes a small detour off the main road to explore the woods. Yeah, we do. The country roads take me home. Drag racing. A drag racing track. Leslie stumbles across a drag racing track in the woods, and while Rod is healthier than ever, Leslie decides it's probably not a good idea to test the old boy too much. That's what I was looking for. A little garage there. Could be useful. Some useful stuff in there. Oh, never mind. I'll take it back. That's the exact mechanics book we're missing. Thank you, drag racers. Mechanics volume four in hand, Leslie continues down the track to the next set of buildings. Oh, that was a tiny tree that I managed to just about miss. Don't crawl under my trailer, you idiot. Where are these guys getting these this fresh, fresh, uh, fresh, fresh bread from? Is there a bakery out there? I assume they're not making it on the on the road. You know what that means, though. We can have a delicious fish sandwich later for lunch, I think. He continues on and pauses for a moment to soak in the afternoon light dappled through the forest. It's beautiful and peaceful, and the calm before the storm of Louisville. Beautiful trees. Oh, it's a fun area to explore that I haven't been to before. There's a lot of cowboys around. Easily dispatched. Let's have a look, shall we? See so if there's any guns at this shooting range. You would assume. What are you? You're like some kind of. I'm actually sure what you are. Kind of in fancy dress. Amazona. Whoa. Fresh pepperoni and pancakes. What on earth? Fish, ginger root, hunting knife. Amazona feather. Cool. I've got this little feather thing on my head now. It's cute. It's very cute. Very, very cute. Smoke a sick, mate. Looking extremely fetch with his new feather, Leslie investigates the shooting range but doesn't find much except another box of screws and a propane tank. Looters have already been through this area probably a long time ago. Before bed, he makes a pepperoni and grape leaf salad. Sandwich, I mean sandwich. And then falls asleep. On the morning of day 78, Leslie nibbles on the leftover sandwich then pulls off this slick manoeuvre with Rod. What a manoeuvre! Good stuff, Les. On the way out, Rod notices another Amazona warrior in the group. He has to stop and take a look. Wow, so cool. I think we've got a new cloak too. That's better than the one we're currently wearing. We'll go for the double cloak. Oh, now that's nice. Ooh. Got a new hip bag too. And we are looking s sexy, Leslie. Decked out in his snazzy new gear, Leslie turns into the hunting lodge parking lot. There could be all kinds of treasures inside. Oh. Really hoping I could get through there. Knob Creek. <laughs> Zombies dispatched and knob jokes made. Leslie heads into the lodge to see what he can find. Hello there. Goodbye. It's very cosy in here, isn't it? I definitely want the deer trophy for the van. He does take the deer head trophy and doesn't find much else. And when he heads outside, some old friends appear in the sky. Excellent driving, Leslie. Oh, God. Quite a lot of zombies here, though. As expected, the closer he gets to Louisville, the more the zombie numbers increase, and the helicopter gets much, much more annoying. Leslie sticks his middle finger up at the helicopter through Rod's open window. Oh boy, oh boy. But Leslie Stump is no coward. Not anymore. He jumps from the RV with his machete and goes to town on the horde. He wants peace. He wants peaceful fish sandwiches in the back of his beloved RV. And no stinking zombies are going to take that from him. 
Ooh. The battle rages on for most of the afternoon. In the near distance, a machine gun rat -a tat tats That sounded very close. Eventually, Leslie deals with the last two zombies on the road and can return for that scrumptious fish sandwich that he'd been dreaming of all day. He rests on the sofa for a moment after the bloodshed. Blood drenched and exhausted. Leslie, goddamn stump. Oh my good god. Okay, welcome to Louisville, I guess. Jesus Christ, okay. Leslie has arrived in Louisville. Can you tell? And this is just the outskirts. It's going to get a lot worse than this for little old Leslie. But he's prepared and stronger than ever. To be able to pop inside Rod, he needs to kill all the zombies nearby. So he gets to it. As a little distraction, he puts up the deer head on the wall. It looks amazing. Nice. That looks amazing. Then it's back out to kill more zombies. This will become a bit of a running theme of Leslie's life. He is finally getting revenge on these fleshy little freaks. Leslie kills zombies until almost lunchtime, and all that slicing has made Leslie a very hungry man. Uh, yeah, I need to get something to eat. Won't eat this now then, because we might actually explode in a poopy mess. We'll die! He eats what he can before he explodes into a pile of goo, then puts the food into his new front pouch, like some kind of cannibal kangaroo, then continues to slice and dice his way up the road to Louisville proper. It's slow but methodical work, and Leslie has all the time in the world. There's no need to rush in the apocalypse. Okay. S soldiers. A lot of army soldiers here. Army soldiers. <laughs> it's like I'm six years old. My army soldiers! Leslie takes out most of Kentucky's armed forces nearby, then clears out the lot. Just keep taking out some of these zombies that are, um... Take a look inside this warehouse then, shall we? A hit? Whoa! That is... Ninja zombie. Sounds like there's quite a lot of them up there. What are they were doing up there? Hiding, I guess. Oh! Wow, that really made me jump. There's something about warehouses that just really freak Leslie out. So he grabs a few bits and pieces and heads back outside. They're cold and empty and lifeless, like being inside of a zombie's head. Quite enough for one day, I think. We can just relax. And relax he does. Good night, little Leslie. Right. We're going to approach on foot. So I think this place is going to be pretty lit. Get my tissue ready. Get Leslie's tissue ready. More soldiers. Army of the dead. Day 80's plan is to make his way towards the military checkpoint, which he reckons is just up the road. It's the gateway to Louisville and is likely infested with zombies. He takes some out on the way to clear a path for Rod. God, the machete's so good. Really is. So good. Such a good weapon. Wow, absolute chaos here. Wonder what happened. Must have been a total disaster. Mmm, a lovely tissue out of the back of a van. Mmm, lovely. I love the idea that someone was bringing their tanker to the military checkpoint. After pondering on the nutcase that brought their tanker of whiskey to the military checkpoint, Leslie sneaks into the base. We'll have to move those roadblocks out of the way if we want to bring Rod in here. After clearing out a few more zombies in the general area, Leslie backtracks to pick up Rod and bring the RV closer. The Butcher of Louisville smokes a cigarette. Leslie, being Leslie, stuffs his face with pancakes the moment he gets back to Rod. Mm, pancakes? Yes, please. Oh, we ate too many pancakes, Leslie. Now you feel a bit poorly. He drives Rod up to the roadblock. He has to cut down a few trees to actually get through. To avoid situations like we've experienced before, we're going to hop out and uh, deal with these zombies here. He's a little bit thirsty, so we'll have a little sip of some of Rod's juice. I'd like some juice, please, Rod. Give me some of your sweet juice. Thank you, honey. Leslie is losing his mind. Oh, that's very satisfying. Leslie is just absolutely screaming his head off. Screaming. Come to me. Now Rod is within the gated area and it's safe to pop inside. Leslie has some dinner. Dry ramen noodles and fish stir fry with olive oil. That sounds just delectable, Leslie. You really are becoming quite the little chef. He's in pain again. He keeps eating too much. I love this like routine of Leslie eating meals and then having painkillers immediately afterwards because he's eating too much food. 
After dinner and before bed, Leslie does a wee bit of tailoring to pad up his new Amazona cloak. Wow, Leslie really needs a wash, doesn't he? He's absolutely filthy. Oh, filthy little Leslie, covered in blood and gore and mud and dirt and filth. Let's give Badger a tie. He's got a big interview in the morning. Oh, it's just been lost forever into Leslie's bed. With God knows what else is in there. With Badger dressed appropriately for his big day, Leslie heads out on the morning of day 81 to start clearing out the base and looting some tents. What on earth are you? Ugh. What on... What? Uh, looks like an ood. Some kind of alien creature. Not only did he take out a handful of noodles with his bare hands, he then just stuffed the rest of the noodles directly into his pocket. Leslie. Noodles in his pocket, nice and warm on his leg, Leslie begins upgrading his bag. It looks sick. Oh, now we have a balloon. Oh, well, we're gonna have to use this, aren't we? Oh, we can put, we can put, we can take Badger with us too. Boris can come with us. Oh, Leslie, how can you be depressed? Look what we've created for you. Take those antidepressants and buck up, Leslie. Look, Boris has come with us, our lucky good luck charm. Let's drive the RV in, shall we? Imagine if you saw this maniac walking towards you in the apocalypse with a balloon and a badger. Completely lost his mind, our little Leslie. Completely lost his mind. Leslie begins looting here and there, but doesn't find much to begin with. And he gets peckish again, of course. Just taking it nice and slow. We're going to do all of Louisville like this, basically. Otherwise, Leslie will die. And we don't want Leslie to die, do we? Not really. Have another fish stir fry whilst we're here. With ginger. Mmm. Pull up with fish, he begins looting more of the military tents. He finds a medical tent with supplies inside and a bunch of armour and bullets in a few of the different tents, but no real big hauls, like a nice weapon or anything. Leslie takes a moment to admire himself in the back of the RV, he's looking very snazzy, and then he goes to sleep on day 81, full with optimism. Check out a few more of these tents. See what goodies lay inside. Guns, please. On day 82, Leslie's back at it, and he comes to the realisation that he's probably wearing just too many clothes. Problem is, is that we're, like, permanently encumbered because we're just, we're just wearing so many clothes. We're wearing both cloaks right now, Les. I can even see your beautiful little eyes now, Leslie. Apparently this army was just about looking good rather than actually killing zombies. Which might explain why they're all dead. I feel like this backpack would be hugely impractical. Zombies would definitely grab hold of it. Just eat the noodles out of the back of the trailer, Les. Mmm, trailer noodles. I'm going to talk into it. I'm going to say, hello, my name's Leslie Stump. I'm the last man on Earth and I've completely lost my mind. Do you like my balloon? And then he's going to rip the camera up with his bare hands. Destroy it, Leslie. Destroy it. And we're going to read a couple of hours before bed. Day 82 passes in a bit of a confused blur. Just know that Leslie looted all of the tents and found almost nothing of value except some snazzy new gear. On day 83, he moves into the camping area and pillages some propane from various barbecues dotted around. Oh, this car is gorgeous. Little burger van set up. Oh, well, that's just tragic, isn't it? Hello? I'd like a burger, please. Gravy mix, though. Oh, Leslie. You love gravy, don't you, Leslie? Gravy. Leslie is a gravy man. Always has been, always will be. He sets off again up the road to see what awaits him. So the slaughter of Louisville begins. That wasn't so bad. We are a little bit exhausted, though. Make gravy. Yes! We're going to have a bowl of gravy for lunch. Yes! Cold gravy. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> Get it in your son. Go check out Spiffos for more ketchup. I'm just going to raid every Spiffos on the map. Eat every bottle of ketchup available in town. So much ketchup. Leslie's Les going to have a ketchup bath. You have more ketchup for me, man. I like your glasses. Knocked them right off your face. Let's keep moving, Les. Deeper and deeper into the spider's web of Louisville. Leslie passes the hospital, but decides that's the last place he ever wants to be, so he keeps on moving. Oh boy, here's the whole gang. Someone there having a little nibble? There are zombies everywhere. 
Leslie expected this, of course, but he still wants to be safe, so he heads north towards the river, where he hopes there might be fewer zombies. Still a little busy. Leslie is tired now also. The fight outside the mansion is a little desperate. Leslie is very tired, and the spear is heavy in its hands. My oh god, quite a few down there. Might have to sleep in this house tonight. To stay safe and live for another day, another week, to reach that illustrious 100 day goal, he retreats into the mansion and finds a quiet room with a big bed to sleep in. Good job, Leslie. You're still alive. Well, I didn't go to plan. <laughs>